Yes, please. I'm wondering how or when you decided to be writer, or if there was a time where you just realized, oh, I, I guess I'm a writer now, and your relationship with that term as a profession or as a identity. So the question is, uh, when was it that you chose to, or realized you were a writer, or chose to be a writer? I think I always really liked writing, but like I say, I was sort of like, I think I chose to be an actor because so many people had said, listen, I don't know what you're doing here. So <laughs> it was like, so, well, you know, and not in so many words, but they're just like, I was clearly streamed out of writing, out of, you know, actually being a person who could write things and was a writer. So I kind of was like, I guess I'll be an actor. Huh. Kind of. I love acting, but I, I certainly, when I think back, I can remember earlier writing stories and really getting excited about like creating characters and drawing pictures of people and writing their story in a complicated, <laughs> convoluted, oblique way. But uh, I just always really love to tell stories. I actually, when I was younger, when I was like 12, this is so strange, my friends would be like, they would make me tell them stories. So like I would just come up with stories, they would pick like, a location and characters, and I would just tell them a story. So they'd be like, okay, so uh, in the story, uh, there's Squirrel, um, <laughs> Joey from New Kids on the Block, um, <laughs> and then some other like random thing, and I would just tell them stories. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be like, yo, you should tell, you should tell, so she tells good stories, okay? So we would like do three-way calling, <laughs> which nobody needs to do anymore. <laughs> and then I would be like, Okay, so uh, what do you want in your story? And it was like, I was like running some sort of story factory. So I think I've always, <laughs> it's so weird. Um, but so I think I've always really liked to tell stories. And then I just, when I went to Ryerson, I was like, partly I was like excited to tell stories. And also I was like, I want to tell, the, as opposed to being a person who's like, I feel like these stories should be out there. Why aren't they out there? Why aren't there parts for me? Well. Okay, you can say that, or you can actually go, I want to create the stories that I'd like to see, as opposed to just complaining about the fact that perhaps you don't see yourself, or you don't see the kinds of stories that you believe should be told. Well, you can take action and try and write them. So that's what I've chosen to do. Yeah. I feel it's a lot, sorry, I have to talk into my cleavage like a spy. Um, I. Uh, I, I also feel a lot of it comes from not feeling like represented somehow, like not feeling like you see yourself re reflected back to you anywhere. And I always wrote, but I didn't value it because I, it was something I liked to do. And I went to the theater school originally at Concordia, uh, to, doing sort of a general theater major there. And I thought maybe I would act and I was terrible at it. Maybe I'd direct and I was bad. And then in my last year of theater school, I spent, I took a playwriting class and I spent all year and I wrote nine pages. And they were well received, and I thought, oh, this is for me. <laughs> and then I applied to the National Theater School, and I got in. I did a workshop with Sheldon, and then I applied to NTS. But I worked so hard, and I learned to type when I was really young because I have terrible handwriting. And I actually wrote almost all of my plays on a typewriter, not on a computer. Wow. Um, a typewriter, because when I started working in television, I needed something to distinguish that as a feeling. Um, but, I, but it was those nine pages, and being well received, and feeling like, oh. Well, when, when we were talking before the evening began, we were all exchanging a variety of things we'd been kicked out of. <laughs> and it, it, so it, it, the, the only thing left on the list was playwriting. Um, I got kicked out of a tap dance program. You were, you, you had break dance issues. We were both kicked out of choir. We were both kicked out of choir. Um, we, uh, uh, Lisa and I met break dancing. Mm -hmm. She was good at it, I was not. And uh, it's true. We worked together, though. We did work together. She worked together. She saved another playwright, Claudia Day, and I uh, got into this break dancing thing. And we were so clearly outmatched, and everyone else was an actor or a dancer. And, uh, and Lisa came and helped us, coached us through the terrible times. <laughs> um, but no, it's true. Sometimes it is like, I think a lot of people come in through acting, and some of them are good actors, and some of them are people who don't yet know there's another expression. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something about being kicked out of a lot of things or not. There's something about not being good at things. Like I used to, I played field hockey for many years and I was not good. Like I played at university 
I was not good. I was very enthusiastic, mm. and I tried very, very hard, but I was not a good player. And so, but it was great because I was always working at something that I was just not good at. But what it taught me was hard work. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd never worked so hard, <laughs> like, running around, <laughs> trying to hit the ball in my life. I actually have a scar here that actually proves that it's a huge scar that hit in the face. But anyway, that's another story. But, I, I, like, that's what I, I think also, like, being an athlete somehow, like, prepared me for, like, the, uh, of the work of having to be a playwright or having to be an actor, of having to work really, really hard and failing sometimes and, and not getting to where you need to be and, and uh, just continuing to work. So, like, the work of it, there, that's kind of the, I don't really remember what I started with, but. <laughs> That's where I'm ending. <laughs> That's where Always I'm ending. Always good to know when to end.